The air was thick with tension, the kind of tension that you could almost feel pressing down on your shoulders, making every breath a little bit harder to take. It was a tension born from years of struggle, of dreams deferred, and of a world that seemed to be constantly at odds with itself. The 1990s hip-hop scene pulsed with energy and rivalry. It was a time when the beats were raw, the lyrics were real, and the competition was fierce. Artists battled for supremacy, not just on the charts, but in the streets, in the clubs, and in the hearts of their fans. The music was a lifeline, a way out, and a way up. But a shadow lurked beneath the surface, a shadow that was as much a part of the scene as the music itself. It was a shadow of violence, of crime, and of a world where the lines between right and wrong were often blurred. This shadow was always there, lurking in the background, waiting for its moment to strike. This shadow had a name, Poochie, a name that was whispered in the street, spoken in hushed tones and feared by many. Poochie was not just a man, he was a symbol of the darker side of the hip-hop world, a world where power was often measured in fear and respect was earned through violence. He was a soldier in the Bloods, a name whispered in the streets. The Bloods were more than just a gang, they were a force to be reckoned with. They controlled territories, influenced the music, and had a hand in the lives of many of the artists who were trying to make a name for themselves. He was a player in a deadly game, a game where the stakes were high and the rules were often written in blood. In this game, there were no second chances, no do-overs. Every move was a gamble and every decision could be your last, a game that would eventually claim the life of a legend. The notorious Big Biggie Smalls was more than just a rapper, he was an icon. His music spoke to a generation and his influence was felt far beyond the world of hip-hop, but even legends are not immune to the shadows that lurk in the corners of their world. The notorious Big Biggie Smalls was on top of the world, his rhymes were gold, his charisma was undeniable, he had the world at his feet, and a future that seemed limitless. But with great success comes great risk, and Biggie was no stranger to the dangers that came with his fame. But fame is a fickle mistress. It can lift you up, but it can also bring you crashing down. For every adoring fan, there is a jealous rival. For every moment of glory, there is a shadow waiting to take it all away. Biggie knew this all too well, and he lived with the constant fear that his time at the top could be cut short at any moment. It paints a target on your back. In the world of hip-hop, success can be as dangerous as it is rewarding. The more you have, the more others want to take it from you. And in a world where power is often measured in violence, that target on your back can be a very real and very deadly threat. And in this game, jealousy and revenge were currencies of exchange. Alliances were formed and broken, friendships were tested, and every move was watched with suspicion. In this world, trust was a rare commodity, and betrayal was always just around the corner. Poochie's story is not just about a murder, it's about a world where the lines between right and wrong are often blurred and where survival often comes at a high price. It's a story of ambition, of loyalty, and of the lengths that people will go to in order to protect what they have and to take what they want. It's about the toxic blend of loyalty, ambition, and violence. A blend that can create legends but that can also destroy them. In this world every decision is a gamble and every move can have deadly consequences. It's a story of the streets where survival often comes at an unthinkable price. A price that is paid in blood, in tears, and in the lives of those who are caught in the crossfire. It's a story that is as old as the streets themselves and one that continues to play out in the shadows of the hip-hop world. This is the untold story of the man behind Biggie's murder, a story that is as complex and as compelling as the music that defined a generation. It's a story of power, of ambition, and of the shadows that lurk behind the bright lights of fame. And it's a story that continues to resonate long after the music is faded. The rivalry between East Coast and West Coast hip hop was reaching fever pitch. It was a clash of titans, a battle of lyrical giants that transcended music and seeped into the very fabric of urban culture. It was more than music, it was about pride, respect. It was about representing where you came from, your roots, your hood. The beats and rhymes were just the surface. Underneath was a deep-seated need for recognition and validation. It was about claiming your turf. The streets were a battleground and every block was a potential war zone. The music was a way to stake a claim, to say, this is my territory, my home. On one side, you had Biggie, the king of New York. He was more than just a rapper, he was a symbol of the East Coast's dominance in the hip-hop world. His flow was smooth, his lyrics were raw and real. Biggie's storytelling ability was unmatched, painting vivid pictures of the struggles and triumphs of life in the concrete jungle. He represented the grit and grind of East Coast life, the hustle, the struggle, the relentless pursuit of success in a city that never sleeps. On the other side, there was Tupac Shakur, a lyrical warrior from the streets of LA. 
Tupac was a force of nature, a poet with a microphone whose words could move mountains. Tupac was passionate, angry, a voice for the voiceless. His music was a call to arms, a rallying cry for those who felt marginalized and oppressed. He embodied the West Coast's rebellious spirit. The sun-soaked streets of LA were his canvas and he painted them with tales of defiance and resilience. The media fueled the fire, turning every diss track into a declaration of war. Headlines screamed of beef and betrayal, amplifying the tension between the coasts. It was a powder keg waiting to explode. The air was thick with anticipation and everyone knew it was only a matter of time before things boiled over. Caught in the crosshairs was Pucci, a young man trying to navigate the treacherous waters of gang life in Los Angeles. He was a young blood born and raised in the concrete jungle of Los Angeles. The streets were all he knew and the gang was his family. Loyalty to his set was everything. It was a bond stronger than blood, a commitment that defined his very existence. He lived and breathed the codes of the street. Respect, honor, and loyalty were not just words, they were a way of life. And in this world, loyalty often demanded a steep price. The stakes were high and the consequences of betrayal were deadly. Pucci knew that every day could be his last, but he also knew that he had to stay true to his set, no matter the cost. The rivalry between the East and West Coast was more than just a backdrop. It was a storm that threatened to engulf everyone in its path. Pucci wasn't born a killer. He was a product of his environment. South Central Los Angeles in the 1990s was a breeding ground for gangs. Poverty, drugs, and violence were the norm. For young men like Pucci, the streets offered a sense of belonging, a twisted kind of family. He learned to fight before he could read, he saw death before he could drive. The gang became his life, the bloods were his brothers, they had his back and he had theirs, no matter what. Pucci was drawn to the power and respect that came with being a blood. He rose through the ranks, he became known for his ruthlessness, his loyalty. He was a soldier ready to do whatever it took to protect his own. Section 4 Blood In Blood Out No Escape From The Game The gang life was a dangerous game. It was a world of secrets, lies, and violence. Once you were in, there was no way out. Pucci knew the rules. He had seen what happened to those who broke them. He had blood on his hands. One night, a fight broke out at a club in Compton. Shots were fired. A rival gang member lay dead on the floor. Pucci was there. He didn't hesitate. He pulled the trigger. That night, he crossed a line. There was no turning back. The streets whispered his name. He was feared, respected, but the weight of his actions began to wear on him. He was trapped in a cycle of violence, a cycle that seemed impossible to break. Section 5, The Notorious Big, A King Rises. The story of Christopher Wallace, better known as Biggie Smalls or The Notorious Big, is one of meteoric rise and tragic fall. Born and raised in the tough streets of Brooklyn, New York, Biggie's journey to the top was anything but easy. While Pucci was navigating the dangerous world of the streets, Biggie was also finding his way through the same perilous environment. The streets of Brooklyn were unforgiving, and survival required a unique blend of street smarts and talent. Biggie Smalls was taking the music industry by storm. His raw talent and undeniable charisma set him apart from the rest. He wasn't just another rapper, he was a storyteller, a poet who could weave intricate tales of street life with a flow that was both smooth and powerful. His debut album, Ready to Die, was a massive hit. Released in 1994, it was a gritty, unflinching look at the life of a young man trying to make it in a world stacked against him. The album resonated with fans and critics alike, cementing Biggie's place in the pantheon of hip-hop legends. He was the undisputed king of New York. His influence extended far beyond the city, reaching fans across the globe. Biggie's music spoke to the struggles and triumphs of everyday life, making him a relatable and beloved figure. His lyrics painted vivid pictures of street life. His flow was hypnotic. Each verse was a window into his world, filled with the highs and lows of his experiences. Biggie's ability to connect with his audience on such a personal level was a testament to his genius. Biggie's success didn't go unnoticed on the West Coast. The burgeoning hip-hop scene in Los Angeles was paying close attention. Rivalries began to brew as artists from both coasts vied for supremacy in the rap game. Some saw him as a threat. The competition was fierce, and Biggie's rapid ascent to fame made him a target for those who felt their own positions were threatened. The tension between the East and West Coast was palpable, a symbol of East Coast dominance. Biggie represented the pinnacle of East Coast hip-hop, a genre that was defined by its gritty, hard-hitting style. His success was a source of pride for his fans and a point of contention for his rivals. The rivalry between the coasts intensified. 
What started as a competition for musical dominance quickly escalated into a full-blown feud, with artists and fans alike taking sides. The media played a significant role in stoking the flames of this rivalry. The media fanned the flames. Sensational headlines and provocative stories kept the feud in the public eye, creating an atmosphere of animosity and distrust. The rivalry became more than just about music, it was a cultural battle that divided the hip-hop community, and in this climate of suspicion and hatred, tragedy was just a heartbeat away. The tension reached a boiling point and the consequences were devastating. The lives of many young artists were forever changed by the violence that erupted from this feud. Biggie was more than just a rapper. He was a son, a friend, and a mentor to many. His larger-than-life persona often overshadowed the fact that he was a deeply caring and loyal individual. He was a father, a husband, a friend. His family and friends knew him as Chris, a man who loved and protected those close to him. Despite his fame, he remained grounded and dedicated to his loved ones. He was loved by millions. His music touched the hearts of fans around the world and his legacy continues to inspire new generations of artists. Biggie's impact on the world of hip-hop is immeasurable, but in the eyes of some, he was a target. His success and influence made him a focal point in the ongoing feud, and he became a symbol of the very tensions that were tearing the hip-hop community apart, a pawn in a game he didn't even know he was playing. The forces at play were larger than any one individual, and Biggie found himself caught in a web of rivalry and violence that he never intended to be a part of. His story is a poignant reminder of the cost of fame and the fragility of life. Section 6, A Fateful Night in Los Angeles, March 9, 1997. It was a night that would change hip-hop forever. Biggie was in Los Angeles for the Soul Train Music Awards. The tension in the air was palpable. After an after-party, Biggie and his entourage were driving through Los Angeles. They stopped at a red light. A dark car pulled up alongside them. Shots rang out. Biggie was hit multiple times. The car sped away. Biggie was rushed to the hospital, but it was too late. The King of New York was dead. The news of Biggie's death sent shockwaves through the music industry. Fans were in disbelief. Friends and fellow artists mourned. The world wondered, who could have done this, and why? Section 7, Silence and Whispers. The Aftermath. The streets of Los Angeles went silent, an uneasy tension hung in the air. Everyone was a suspect, rumors swirled, theories were debated. But the truth was elusive. The LAPD launched a full-scale investigation. They were under immense pressure to find Biggie's killer. But the case was complex. Witnesses were afraid to talk. Evidence was scarce. The media went into overdrive. They speculated about the motives behind the murder. Was it a revenge killing for Tupac's death? Was it a result of the East Coast-West Coast rivalry? Or was it something more sinister? The questions lingered, unanswered.